Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch and GDC is going on. That means we're going to get a ton of game development news this week and we started off with Roblox. Roblox just announced Cube 3D, uh, so if you're interested, we are going to check that out right now. So this one is generative AI and yeah, I can hear the groans from here. This one was first actually announced back in September at RDC, which is the Roblox developer conference. They talked about a number of things at RDC, but the first thing that they talked about, oh well, not the first thing, literally the second thing, the second thing they talked about was scaling and creation, uh, scaling creation and access. And a key part of that was down here. We also want to make it easier to create great content at scale. We've been building AI into Roblox for years with tools like Assistant, Texture Generator, and Avatar Auto Setup. These only scratch the surface of what we have planned. Today, we are sharing some early demonstrations from an incubation project we launched a few months ago with a team of researchers and engineers. This internal AI product project will power generative creation on our platform. Our 3D foundational model will be open source and multi-model, uh, and it will power 3D generation through text, video, and 3D prompts. We see a powerful future where Roblox experiences will have extensive generative AI capabilities to power real-time creation integrated with gameplay. We will provide these capabilities in a resource efficient manner so we can make them available to everyone on the platform. Well, this is what we were talking about today and it is moving beyond the Roblox platform because they're actually open sourcing the foundational model. So it now has a name. It is called Roblox Cube. It is their core generative AI system for 3D and 4D. I have no idea what 4D actually means in this sense. It's generally 3D plus time, so maybe it's animated. It doesn't really matter at this point in time because it's quite a ways off. So the highlight version of it is they're releasing the Cube 3D Foundation model for generative AI. They're open sourcing a version of the Cube 3D Foundational model and a beta version of the Cube 3D um, generation in Roblox Studio as well as via API will be available this week. So you can actually, if you're experienced, you want to create something using API dynamically in your code, you can do that as well. Plus you'll be able to generate objects inside of Roblox Roblox Studio, but if you're not using Roblox, it's this part that you might be most interested in, is they are open sourcing a version of the Cube 3D system. Uh, so this is, it generates 3D models environments directly from text and in the future image inputs. Today's state of the art 3D generation uses images and reconstruction approach to build 3D objects. This is good option when there isn't significant 3D training data. Now this part I find interesting. However, thanks to the nature of our platform, we train on native 3D data. So does that mean they're training on all of the Roblox creations that are out there? Because I, I think that's what that means. So uh, if you are a Roblox developer and you've been creating stuff in Roblox, there is a pretty good chance that you are part of the data set that is being used here. Now, one of the things they're actually going to be doing with Cube 3D is using it to create entire scenes, basically uh, recursively going through things uh, and creating entire scenes using the same basic logic. They also talk about the... Um, the safety of their model. This is a big concern when it comes to AI data sets for everybody. So anyone can fine tune, develop plugins for, or train Cube3D on their own data to suit their needs. We believe that AI tools should be built on openness and transparency, which is why we are committed partners in the open source AI community. We released one of our AI safety models because we feel strongly that sharing advancements in AI safely, safety helps the entire industry accelerate innovation and technical advancements. For this reason, we also helped found Roost, a, non, a new nonprofit dedicated to tackling important areas in digital safety with open source safety tools. In open source and Cube 3D, our goal is to enable uh, researchers, developers, and a broader AI community to learn, augment, and advance 3D generation industry-wide. So a little bit of details about how it ultimately works are available here. This is kind of the interesting part. So imagine building a racetrack game. Today, you could use the mesh generation API within the system by typing in a quick prompt like generate a motorcycle, generate orange safety cone. Within seconds, the API would generate a mesh version of these objects. You could then be fleshed out with texture, color, etc. With this API, you can model props or design your space uh, much faster. No need to spend hours modeling simple objects. It lets you focus on the fun stuff like designing the track layout and fine tuning the car handling. The API saves you hours on each object creation and gives you back the time to experiment with new ideas without worrying about spending too much time. Longer term, we, enable, we plan to enable more complex and functional objects, even scenes. So there is a bit in here, I'm not gonna go through it, but where it's gonna work recursively to create and populate entire scenes. Now, where this entire thing kind of falls in its face to me, is here. You're seeing example 3D objects that were generated using Cube 3D, and I think they're awful. <laughs> That's kind of the point I got to point out. There are a ton of tools out here for doing this kind of stuff. Um, so maybe it's like a Roblox art style thing. So here we've got, let's go to the first one here. So this is a red buggy with knobby tires. 
and you can see there's no clean lines. The tire isn't round. It looks like bad photogrammetry to me. And that's a, I'm a mex, I am a master of creating bad photogrammetry. So this is something that I know quite well, but I wouldn't use this in a game. I think it looks bad. Personally, I think the mesh is awful. Uh, so that's where we're starting. In time, of course, this will improve. Next up, we have uh, a vintage green couch with clean lines and a velvet material. Again, I think the mesh is bad. So I wouldn't personally use it. Again, very early on, it could get better in time. And then we have this one, a 3D generated, uh, so a green crystal fantasy sword with gold accents. Now look right here. And you're gonna see the green of the sword is actually blobbing over into the hilt as an example, which again, doesn't make any sense. And why do you have the green of the sword also in the, the handle part, which again, doesn't make, this is not a model that I would actually use. And uh, we move on here. We've got a brown moto leather jacket. This is the first model I think I've seen generated that uh, is useful, I, I think, in, at least in my opinion. I'm curious to hear what yours is down below. Uh, and then we've got uh, a unicorn with rainbow mane. Now look at this again. Look right here. This eye not modeled. This eye modeled. So even like the, the model is bad. So you got modeling on the eye going on, but only on one side. The other one is done entirely with texture. Um, not super impressed. At least the legs are separate. That's one of those areas where AI often, oh, no, they're not. So even there, another example, classic thing where AI screw up. Look at this. There's a blob in between the front legs where they're still connected. So you couldn't use this animated. And then finally, we have a cartoon whale, which is where we started it. So the big thing that I'm finding right now with Cube 3D is the results don't look that good. So uh, it'd be interesting to see where this ultimately goes. It is open source. We do have details of how it actually works. Uh, again, they're using a GPT model of things, and this is gonna work kind of in a recursive part. So if you wanted to have uh, a motor, so uh, an avatar of uh, on a motorcycle in front of a garage, it breaks it down into the various different pieces and builds them all together. So you got things like garage with parts, motorcycle mesh, avatar, avatar, motorbike, and garage, and so on. So that's how it's going to do entire scenes in the future, a little bit of the tech behind it, and then ultimately where it is going. So you're gonna have, imagine an experience with a simple scene that can be described as an avatar on a motorcycle in front of a racetrack with trees and have it go through and generate all of that stuff for you. I, I, again, with this being the quality that it is generating currently, I'm not I'm not really impressed with playing those games going forward. Now, of course, this stuff is definitely going to improve with time. And the cool thing about this one, again, is it is being open source. So if you want to go ahead and check it out, it should be available next week, both in studio, in API form, as well as the, um, the core, uh, sorry, Cube 3D Foundation model. Uh, if you go to the very bottom of this article, like right here, uh, what you'll see is uh, we will share updates and new functionality as we continue improving and expanding our foundation model. Until then, we hope you enjoy using and building on top of our open source version of the Cube 3D model, which will be available later this week. So it uh, should be available very soon. And yeah, that's it. So let me know what you think of Gen I in general. I know it's a very polarizing subject of Roblox implementation. And let me know specifically what you think of the quality that it is generating here versus other options that are out there. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.